Hello there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and in this video I'm going to teach you all about working with images in Adobe InDesign. So let's get started. Unless you understand images inside of InDesign, they can get a little bit confusing and even frustrating. So when you understand the way they work in comparison to the way you would use an image in Photoshop or in Illustrator, then I think everything else is just a lot easier. Okay, for importing images, I have two options. I can either come to my images, grab it, and then pop it right in there. And you'll see I have that little cursor there with my image loaded on it. And I can drop it from here. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back. And then the second way is to come up to File, Place, and then grab my image from here. So I'm going to click on that one. This one, um, you have a few more options here, but for the most part, you can do it either way. So I'm going to click OK. Now you can see I'm at the place where I was before with my cursor loaded up with my image. So I can, from here, have two more options. I can either click anywhere and just drop the image like that. Now you can see when I did that, uh, that this image is extremely large. So I'm going to zoom out. This is a eight and a half by 11 paper sized document right here and uh, right here. And then this is my image. So you can see that it is many times that size. So I'm going to back out of that. And um, because it's so big, I'm just going to go ahead and add it. If I click with my mouse and drag it across, I can create my own frame for this picture. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice about this image when you hover over it is this little controller right here. I call it a controller. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. But when you click on it, it does control the image. Now there are, is an image here. Uh, when you click on here, you'll see right around here um, that the border start or begins to turn this um, yellowish red color. That means that the image is selected. This blue color right here is the frame that it's inside of. So you do have a frame and you have an image that goes inside that frame. If you're used to a program like Photoshop, you're probably not used to your images also having frames. Photoshop does have a frame tool, but in general images are not married to the frame as you'll find in InDesign. Uh, when it's selected, you'll see, like I said before, that yellowish red outline. When the outline is visible, you can use the handles to resize the image and move the image inside the frame. So we have these handles and we can use them to resize it. Now, if you take a look at what happened here, I resized this image. Now I have my, my image has the reddish border around here but we still also have this frame right here, which goes with this picture. So if I move the frame, it's gonna move the picture. It's contained inside of it. I can also just move the picture. So if I want the picture up in the corner, I can do that as well. Now, if I wanted my frame to match my image, I there are also other options here that I could use. So I can, I have this selected and I can come up to object fitting and I have some options here. So I'm going to go to fill frame proportionately. And what it did is it cut off the bottom here so that this image could fit inside of that frame. So it's cropping the image basically, but it's not changing the aspect ratio of the image at all. It's keeping the proportions. So if I go back and I, I, I can also get to that same thing by clicking here, right clicking, and then clicking on fittings. This time I'm going to do 
fit content proportionally. Now you can see that it didn't fit the frame all the way. So it left me these two little sections here on the side of that frame, but this entire image, including that bottom section right there, are all included. Now if you go even further with this menu, uh, we've got content to wear, and this actually does the best job, I feel, of fitting the um, most important sections of the image inside of the frame. Uh, there are a few others that you can play with as well. So let's talk about this frame a little bit. So there are several ways that you can use and make frames. You can use an image placeholder. That would be the first thing. I'm going to delete this and we're going to come over here to the side and I have this frame tool which I call an image placeholder, but it's called the frame tool. I've got these two frames and now I can actually do the same thing uh, with just a regular shape. So I can come in and create a, just a regular square. I'm going to actually add some color to that. Um, or I can add a regular polygon. And I can even use text to create a frame. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and turn this image into a shape. When I do that, it's no longer going to be editable. So I can create my lettering and then turn it into a frame, which I'm going to do right now, but just understand that you won't be able to edit that anymore. So if I grab this, I'm going to go back into my text tool. And I'm going to select it. And I'm going to come up to type and then I'm going to go to create outlines. Now I've essentially just turned that into a shape. So you can see all of these nodes here um, and it's now a shape. So I can actually use that uh, to, to create an image. So let's go ahead and see how that works. We're going to go up to file, place, and we're going to place multiple images in here. So I'm going to grab I think we made five. So I'm going to grab five objects and you'll see that we have five things loaded on our cursor. You can see the number five there. And if I use my keyboard, I can kind of scroll through them with my right and left arrow keys to see what image I want to use. So I think I want to use this image here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop that there. I'm going to use this image here, this one there. This one I'm going to put inside of the lettering and then I'm going to use this right here. And we're going to go through, you can see when I click on this right here, outside here you can kind of um, see that yellow line. That's how big my image is. So I'm going to right click and we're going to go into that fitting. And we're going to go to fit frame proportionally. And with the image we would do the same thing. So we'll just grab it, fitting actually grab a new page, new couple of pages. Um, and I'm going to create something using the pen tool. So uh, this is just going to be a, a free form type thing. Let's see. We'll start it. I'm going to get a ruler. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to start this here and I'm, I'm going to make a top border. So I'm just creating something quickly. And now with this shape selected, what I'm going to do is I come in to file place. And remember this item right here, replace selected item. So I have something selected here, which means that it's going to replace that. So I'm going to, choose one of these. I'll choose this one and I'm going to open it and it's actually just created a frame 
for that image and it works exactly this the same way that the other ones work you use the little handle here to move everything around um, and if I wanted I can right click go to fittings and fit it inside there proportionately so so I can do all of the same things with this that I did with my regular frame except that I created the style of this frame all on my own. So you can see how flexible uh, frames and images can be inside of this program. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you with multiple images is uh, creating a grid. Let me make sure that nothing is selected. And I'm gonna come up to File, Place, and I'm gonna place four images. And click open and now you can see that those four images have been loaded onto my cursor okay I can take these four images and if I press the command and the shift key or control and shift on a PC I'm gonna get a different style of cursor this is the grid that's loaded on the cursor right now and I can click and drag and it's actually gonna drag out a grid for me now I can let go of the command and the shift key but keep my mouse button held down because I'm left-handed so I have to do this a little differently uh, but for other you other lefties out there you can let go of that command and shift key and then use your up and down arrows and your side your left and right arrows to determine how many boxes you're gonna need so we have four images that we're placing here so we just want four boxes so i'm gonna you can either bring them up or bring them down so we're placing four and remember this is just the keys on your keyboard up adds down subtracts right adds and left subtracts so i'm gonna let that go and you'll see that my images are beautifully proportioned in there Okay, so let's do that one more time. We're gonna go up to File, Place. And this time we're gonna grab these three images here. And we're gonna click Open. And again, Shift, Command. And I wanna put these here, but we don't have four images anymore. We have three this time, so we can kinda of work with how we want this to be set up and I'm going to go ahead and drop those and there you go you can also come in and fit the images um, to the frames as well just like we did earlier now just one last thing that I want to show you with regards to images is scaling them so with this image right here I have my image selected. I can tell that because I have this little yellow. Uh, but if I wanted to scale it up, then I need to make sure that I only have my image and then I can scale it back down as well. Now, if I wanted to see what that scaling was going to look like, I could hold down my mouse button and it'll give me an idea of what that image is going to look like. So that was working with images inside of InDesign. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like this video, share the video with somebody else who would find it helpful, subscribe to this channel, and head over to prettywebs.com to check out all of the free and premium resources we have available to online business owners. Until next time, thanks for watching.